Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this episode, we're going to do a book review on pre-trained vision and large language models in Python. I particularly like this book because it provides a whole portfolio of ideas and topics and materials to provide you end-to-end -end techniques for building and deploying foundation models on AWS. First, let's talk about the author. The author's name is Emily Weber. She's a principal machine learning and solution architect at AWS. She has had five plus years of experience at Amazon and has handled hundreds of clients during her years at AWS service. So we're talking about someone who's been out there and have ton of experience of deploying solutions and consult on the solution architect for years. And me personally, I'm very grateful to be here to talk about this book because it provides a tremendous amount of help for me personally, for my passion, as well as for my job. So Emily, if you're watching the video out there, this is a big thank you and shout out to you. Thank you for doing this book. I'm sure it's very helpful for the machine learning community. Not only is the author delivering solutions, she also been a great mentor for many data scientists out there. She has had a 16 video coaching tutorial on YouTube, which of course I'm gonna drop the link in below in this video. So the first part of the book is talking about pre-training. Now, we're not talking about some scikit-learn data sets that at undergraduate level, that's kind of like a pet project that you load in, you're like, fingers crossed, you know, I'm hoping this thing works, right? It's not that simple. So in the beginning of the data science project, you got to pick a data set, you got to really understand what is the business question. And that's precisely what the part one of the book is talking about. So you need to ask yourself, if you improved a large language model by 1% accuracy, what happens next? That is the kind of question that in school you don't get to learn and you probably don't get a lot of exposure of. Which is why I think this book is very interesting because it lists out those questions for you to really encourage you to think about outside of the framework of just training the model, just finding the right data set. And that's just an example, right? It depends on the domain, depends on the business proposition you, gotta, you need to understand the appropriate strategy to raise that profitability, to raise that revenue. And those are the important questions to think about when you're even starting to touch the data, when you even start to just get to know the data set. Part two of the book talk about how to configure the environment, which oftentimes it's a topic that gets ignored at school. I know my time at grad school, nobody talked about the environment in their computer, right? you just pip install a Python package or you use R to install some package without checking the versions. You find a data set without checking the versions, right? Um, you can simply do a from scikit-learn import logistic regression and then hopefully something magical will happen. I would say that's very far away from how things are done in real world. In real world, once you have a data set, you gotta configure the environment. Why? Because every data set has your own characteristics. Every data set has their own traits. You cannot use the same machine learning environment with the same list of packages on every data set. I wish there's an environment out there that can handle all the data set. I wish that's true. Unfortunately, it is not. You got to tailor, you got to tweak the environment based on the packages, based on the size of the data set, just based on what exactly is it that you're doing. So there are certain parameters coming to the equation that you really gotta optimize. And I really appreciate that part two, we have like whole three chapters talking about this kind of stuff. You know, one easy example I can give you guys is the difference of training machines on GPU or CPU. GPU short for graphic processing unit, which of course is faster than CPU. And if you don't create the right environment and you don't configure it properly, you will have a machine that doesn't train that fast. Now, of course, uh, that's a smaller example, right? When you are handling enterprise level projects, training GPU is not free. It's up to you to understand different level of GPUs and how each of those level can affect the speed of the model, the speed of the training. And guess what? You're a data scientist. It's up to you to figure that out. So something like that is important, right? And this book, goes into depth to discuss what those things are. To train the right model, it's also all about fine-tuning the parameters, 
first of all, at school, not all of the teams, not all of the researchers are doing neural networks. Uh, some of them probably are focusing on random forests. Some of them are probably focusing on inference. I don't know. It depends, right? But in the real world, I would say nowadays, probably most people are going to use neural networks or some sort of neural networks based models, which means the number of layers, the number of neurons is complete up to your own discretion. So as a data scientist, your job is to pick and choose the best sets of parameters out there. If you're going to pick a llama model that's 7 billion parameters, you better have a reason why. If you have a model that's tens of billions of parameters, you better have a reason why. Because I got news for you guys, training a large language model is actually not just not free, it produces carbon dioxide. And if everybody's doing that at the same time, well then guess what? It's killing the environment right now. And it's up to us to all pay attention to this kind of stuff. So that's just the tip of the iceberg and something important for all of us to think about. The next part of the book talk about fine tuning. Now, that's another very important milestone in the entire data science cycle. So you get your hands on data, you clean it up, you analyze it, do your exploratory data analysis, and then you jump into modeling. Once you have a model, you're going to fine tune the model. So the fine tuning process is not just about accuracy. It's also about loss. And then when it comes to loss, there are different loss functions, right? Some of them measure linear distance, some of them measure exponential distance, some of them are rescaled to a certain parameters, you name it, right? They're doing different things. And then on top of that, there's also other pros and cons to think about. You need to understand what 1% of increased gain in accuracy do to your business. And without that business proposition as a guidance, it will be very difficult to convince people the benefit of that 1% gain of accuracy. And all of this comes from constant communication with the stakeholder. Because data scientists, your job is to build a model, your job is to push code in production. You may or may not have the domain knowledge to be able to immediately tell the benefit of getting the accuracy high for this particular type of model. And if you don't know that, you better talk to someone, right? You better understand what that high accuracy is doing to your company. So what I really appreciate about this book is that author laid out that thought process in this next part. While you're fine tuning a model, you better take that demand into consideration, not just to show on paper that this thing has a high accuracy, but really to understand what exactly does a high accuracy do. And then from there, if you're graduating at school, uh, that's probably the end of your data science project, right? Because you have a data set, you analyze it, you build a model, you train it, the accuracy looks great, and you should be done, right? You can go out there, write your paper, get it published, you can do whatever you want. But that is not the case in the industry. In the industry, you also have to push the model in production, which is why the last part of this book is talking about deployment. So uh, the most intuitive one, the most easy one is you do all of the development of the code in a Jupyter notebook, in a Python notebook, in your SageMaker IDE on AWS service. And then from there, you can stand up a SageMaker endpoint. The endpoint is backed by whatever model that it is that you're training. It could be a large language model. It could be a computer vision model, whatever you want. And then on the front, people can call that API. People can call that endpoint to invoke your model. And the last part of this book delve into great detail to show you how that can be done, which I really appreciate because I know during my time at grad school, I didn't really get exposure of how to deploy model in production. And I can tell you guys, if you're coming straight out of grad school, this book will be very hands-on and very educative for you. So hopefully the material of this video provides some food for thought. And if you guys like the video, give a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.